Mr Sivre, uh, you're in court this morning, apparently for not complying with your community service order. Is that right? Yes, that, that's correct. Um, it's a method of last resort. Uh, in the final analysis, non-compliance with the community order was the only method available to me to get these legal matters back in court uh, before the election on the 19th of October. Um, the shocking thing that's happened here is that after my appeal was rejected by the Royal Court, I came into possession of some extremely powerful evidence, a 94-page statement by the former police chief, which is of profound and serious relevance to my defence case. The now, former police chief being Graham Power, his, his statements of which are the Wiltshire police, is that right? Uh, absolutely, indeed, yes. Now, from the uh, legal actions were first begun against me, I think over two years ago now, I repeatedly requested disclosure of that kind of evidence because obviously uh, it was going to be of great relevance to my defence case, the abuse of process argument and indeed the uh, malicious prosecution argument. The prosecution, this is the exercise controlled by the Attorney General, William Balash, and then more latterly Tim Lecoq, repeatedly refused to disclose that evidence to me because they claimed it was of no relevance to my defence case. But only in the last few weeks, since the appeal's been over, I've obtained a copy of the report and I've seen that they were lying. It is of dramatic relevance to my defence case and my defence arguments. My response to this was to write to the Judicial Secretary of the Courts in Jersey and say, this makes all of the conviction in case against me unsafe and I therefore want to go back to court and reopen the appeal. Naturally enough, you know, it's a miscarriage of justice because this evidence was improperly hidden from me. I had a reply from the Judicial Secretary, written by William Balash, in fact, in his capacity as Deputy Bailiff, telling me that he would not give me a date in court to deal with this evidence that was unlawfully withheld from me until November, until after the elections. Now, of course, he's conflicted anyway, because he is the culpable Attorney General. He's also doubly conflicted in these matters because his brother, Philip Balash, is a candidate in the election against me. So I was faced with a situation whereby the only opportunity of getting these matters addressed in court before the election was basically to have to not comply with the sentences imposed upon me, hence me being summoned to the Magistrates' Court today. Well, because again, you, you sent on a uh, press release today, a seven-page press release that has been in possession. The BBC have had it for at least two days that we know of. Uh, the press release I sent to them yesterday, yes. On the 10th, I, I believe. But uh, either way, they've also had Mr Graham Power's um, statement to Wiltshire for a matter of weeks. So what you, everything you're saying at the minute could be um, either, uh, how, how do you put it, the, the BBC could either confirm what you're saying is true or say no it's not true. They've got that evidence haven't they? Uh, absolutely. I mean although again this is something I've had to do at, at very serious personal risk, uh, you know it's a strong possibility that I will be arrested and prosecuted again for having possession of that evidence and for having disclosed it on to the BBC. Nevertheless, that's my public duty because it is clearly a very serious public interest matter. I did disclose it to the BBC and they've now had that evidence in their possession for at least a couple of weeks, perhaps two or three weeks. It's a, a dramatically powerful piece of evidence and it deals with a variety of serious public interest issues. Uh, any functional media, this would be like all their Christmases coming at once. The evidence is that dramatic and that powerful. So far, they've made no reference to it at all. And even the uh, extensive interview I gave them yesterday, they've not used. And they've completely misrepresented in their programme today the true nature of why I'm here in court. Well, what I got from there, what I've heard on the radio today and a tweet from BBC Jersey is Sivre in court for not complying with, uh, for not doing his community service. But it's not that at all, is it? It's much, much, much more deeper than that. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, I'm in court today because Jersey's prosecution system is structurally unlawful uh, and it's also individually personally conflicted because of the multiple uh, entanglements in all of these issues of William Balash and Timothy Lecoq. Now this is not just some uh, fanciful 
uh, assertion of mine. It's established law in British administrative law, which runs also in Jersey in terms of the case law, that public authorities must not have a conflict of interests. So when you have a public authority that's exercising an official function, like a prosecution system deciding to prosecute people, the actual individuals making the decisions within that authority cannot have conflicts of interest. They've got to be completely non-conflicted and objective. Now, if the authority doesn't meet that standard and the individuals making the actual decisions are conflicted, then the actions of the authority are unlawful. Now, end of. It's as simple as that. This is not something I'm making up. This is rock-solid established administrative uh, case law. Therefore, the decisions and the actions of uh, William Balash and the Attorney General's office in respect of me are unlawful. And that is proven. The conflicts of interest and the various improper motives are proven and evidenced by Graham Power's statement. And again, this is a witness of dramatic calibre, uh, a man of impeccable professionalism and reputation, no less a figure than a former police chief, a 94-page statement. So the reason that I've had to be in court here today is because the Jersey system is basically unlawful, and this is what I, I have to do to try and expose it, sadly. Well, going by that, because this it is, a, is, a, is a huge document, this 94, 62,000 word document by, by the, the, the former Chief Police Officer Graham Power. Now, as we've said, BBC Jersey have, have, have had hold of this for weeks now, weeks. Yes. Uh, it's looking very much like they're not going to bother uh, publishing a single word of it. If that's the case, then we just, as things stands, we just have to take your word for this. Are you going to publish it on your blog? If if none of the accredited media um, or the state media? Um, it's going to be used in, in court uh, one way or another and the document will then attract the privilege of the court. Uh, and that would be the most effective uh, way of using it. It then becomes much more easily reportable for uh, the, the mainstream media and indeed real journalists like, like you and me. And that would be the preferable way of dealing with it and it would be in fact my hope uh, in fact would be to read the document in these current court proceedings today. Now, Jersey's courts being essentially politicised and corrupt, of course, I doubt very much they're going to let me do that. But nevertheless, if I'm, when I'm let out of prison, uh, at some point, either in Jersey or in London, this document is going to be used in court, and it's going to be used for the purpose of cleaning up Jersey and ensuring that ordinary people of this island get the proper, objective protection of the rule of law. And just finally, now, uh, are we in the in the in the end game now, politically, and uh, with, with yourself and, and the judicial system and the Jersey administration? Uh, this is the end game for the Jersey oligarchy. Um, I think they've they've made a lot of profound, serious errors. Um, beginning about four years ago, really, they they took the wrong path and they decided to not support me and instead to try and cover up all of the child protection failures back in early 2007. Since then, they've made a number of wholly catastrophic judgments, which they've just simply proceeded to compound. Things like suspending Graham Power, uh, engaging in a 10-strong illegal police raid against me, searching the home of two politicians without a search warrant, uh, deeming my entire defence case inadmissible after three months' work, just as soon as they realised the prosecution had no answer to it. Uh, having conflicted judges, the judges failing to disclose evidence to me. These are utterly shocking errors of judgment by Jersey's traditional authorities and frankly there is no way that this current structure is going to survive this.